check out our streaming schedule for this week. We've got tons of content in terms of the NFL and college football as we're going live just about every single day this week. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single moment where we go live. And now, on with our feature presentation. Okay, this is going to be a weird one. If you clicked on this video expecting me to break down the idiotic decision made by this man right here, Nick Sirianni, to try the two-point conversion at the end of the first half, then you came to the right place. But there were also so many other dumb decisions made by the man in charge of the Eagles that I've got to combine them all into one super long video because that's the only way it makes sense to do it. We're not even going to get into the background or anything like that because there is so much to cover because it felt like every single play of this game that was called by Nick Sirianni was a dumb decision. So buckle up, because this one's a doozy that won't be calming the flames of his hot seat anytime soon. But before you do buckle up, be sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we post on the channel. We post every single day about the weird and the wacky history of the NFL, so if you like that sort of stuff, then this is the place for you. Thanks in advance for your support, as we try and hit 70,000 subscribers. All right, so in this battle between the Eagles and the Jaguars, the Jaguars are playing like crap, as per usual. And the Eagles find the end zone on a Saquon Barkley touchdown run, because for some reason, the Jaguars can't stop a third and long run when everyone knows the Eagles aren't going to throw the ball there. The extra point is up and good, and the Eagles lead it 17-0. Three possession game. We go into the halftime break like that, and... Offside, number 52 defense. The offense is elected to attempt a two-point try. Oh no, oh no, you're you're not actually, you're, you're not going to go for two and take a point off the board, right? You're up by three scores. If you get the two, you're up by three scores. And if you don't get the two, you're only up by two scores. You're not really going to do this, right? You're not winning. It's the dish pass, Schultz trying to get there. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Scratch that. Welcome to the first of many dumb decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this could possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Philadelphia Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni. Usually, when a team wins a game, and I do an episode of Dumb Decisions on the coach, I say that the coach is extremely fortunate and lucky that they got the win here, and that this decision ultimately didn't end up mattering. However, I can't say that for the Eagles-Jaguars game, because the Eagles should have blown out the Jaguars by 50. The Jaguars played like crap all game, and the Eagles had a solid 10,000 chances to put them away. And yet, at every single turn, and at every single corner, Nick Sirianni found a way to make the wrong decision. It truly was amazing. If he just did a George Costanza, and did the opposite of whatever came to his head, the Eagles win the game by a gazillion, and Jalen Hurts isn't even playing in the fourth quarter because the backups are in because it's garbage time. The fact that this game was close, and the fact that this game came out to Trevor Lawrence throwing a pick in the red zone, is a testament to just how bad of a coach Nick Sirianni is. And I genuinely mean that. This was one of the worst coach games by anyone in a winning effort that I've ever seen. And I do not say that lightly as someone who watches a ton of football. Every single decision that Nick Sirianni made was the wrong one. And this video length reflects that because we're just going to put it all in one big package and try to at least get some of the highlights. So with that being said, to start off, let's take a look at why going for two up 16-0 is a really bad idea. Football is a game of possessions, and to make a long story short, anytime you have a chance to increase the number of possessions that the other team needs in order to come back and win it, you do it. Plain and simple, you do it. It's almost like how in basketball, points can be semi-meaningless compared to the number of possessions. There's not a massive difference between a two-point game and a three-point game down the stretch, but a three-point game and a four-point game makes a huge difference. And at 16-0, in 
if you kick the extra point and take the free point to make it 17 nothing, here's what happens. You're up by three scores, and the Jaguars cannot possibly catch up with just two scores of their own. Plus, you take all the momentum with you going into the halftime break. Go for two, and here's the pro of getting it. You go up 18 nothing, meaning that you go up by three scores. Don't get it, and it stays 16 nothing, which means you're only up by two scores. So let's break it down. In option one, you go up by three scores. In option two, the best case scenario is that you go up by three scores, while the worst case scenario is that you remain up by just two scores. Gee, that's a tough call. Going up by three scores sounds great, but going for two can result in anything. It can even result in going up by three scores. Like, you realize how insane that logic sounds, right? If the Eagles went for it in this spot and the score was 15-0, even if they didn't get it, I'm not criticizing the call. If they were up 14-0 and went for it, if they didn't get it, I'm not criticizing the call. But considering the score of the game and the fact that they literally had a guaranteed three-possession lead and decided to squander it for no reason except style points to get a three-possession lead that they otherwise would have already had, this was moronic. Flat-out moronic. I need someone to answer me this. What is the honest-to-God difference between being up by 17 and being up by 18? At the end of the day, what is the difference? The other team still needs to get two touchdowns. The other team still needs to get a field goal. The one point that still separates you? That's one play from the two-yard line. That is one singular play in a three-drive sequence. Would I rather be up by 18 points or 17 points? Of course I'd rather be up by 18. However, the difference is extremely marginal. But what's the difference between being up by 16 and being up by 17? A lot. The other team still needs to get two touchdowns, but you eliminate another drive entirely. Ask the Atlanta Falcons how different things would be if they were up 28-11 in the Super Bowl instead of 28-12. The difference isn't marginal when it comes to one play down by the two. It's an entire freaking drive, which means an entire possession and a defensive stop on their end. The amount of work needed to erase a 17-point deficit is comparable to the amount of work needed to erase an 18-point deficit. The amount of work needed to erase a 17-point deficit, however, is significantly more than the amount of work needed to erase a 16-point deficit to the point where you might as well be playing a completely different sport. And yet, somehow, Nick Sirianni didn't realize that. He failed to understand the importance of possessions and just saw the shiny object and went for it without realizing the ramifications. He saw, oh, I get the ball at the one yard line? Let's go for it. Not realizing what happens if you don't get it. And you would think that he would learn from his mistake. You would think it'd be like a kid who touches a hot stovetop. He touches the stovetop, realizes it hurts like crazy, and learns not to touch it again. But on quite literally the very next drive, the Eagles scored a touchdown and got the ball at the one and decided to go for two. And what do you know? It also failed. In fact, the Eagles failed on not one, not two, but three two-point conversions in this one. Three times, the Eagles had a chance to kick the extra point instead of going for two. And all three times, the Eagles failed. Meaning that they literally left an entire field goal on the board and had to chase the points that they foolishly took off the first time for some inexplicable reason that isn't even aggressiveness so much as it is stupidity. But, okay, it is tempting to go for two points from the one-yard line. Maybe they can make up the points later on. And sure enough, they have a chance to do so. It's 22-16 late in the third quarter, and the Jaguars' offense has been playing like garbage the entire game. Through the first 38 minutes, the Jags had one first down and had yet to cross midfield. You've got fourth and a long one yard at the 25-yard line. If you're this man right here, Nick Sirianni, you can make it a nine-point game right here with the field goal. Remember the lesson we talked about earlier with possessions and how possessions are what matter, not necessarily points? Well, here's a chance late in the ballgame 
to make it a two-score game. Jake Elliott is perfect this season from inside of 50 yards, so this 43-yarder is a chip shot. From that 40 to 49-yard range, the man was also perfect in 2023. And over the course of his entire NFL career, he is hitting over 86% of the time from that range. In other words, it is a near guarantee that you're going to make it a two-score game and make this very tough for the Jaguars to come back from. Now, if you want to go for it, I don't agree with it, but seeing as you do have the tush push at your disposal and one of the best running backs in football at your disposal in Saquon Barkley, who was torturing the Jaguars all day, I get it. Plus, on fourth and short, when you go for it and run the ball this season, you're six for seven. So the same percentage as Elliott's percentage from the 40 to 49 yard range. The one time you didn't get it was when it made no sense whatsoever to go for it, which was against the Saints earlier in week three at the end of the first half. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. So you have two realistic options. Make it a two score game or do what you do best in running the ball in short yarded situations, either with a tush push or with your sensational running back who literally did a 360 degree backwards hurdle earlier in the game. At the very least, don't do freaking this. On fourth down, they're looking to throw it. Hurts chased by Lloyd. Hurts stops. Lloyd stays with him. Walker's there too, and Hurts. Like, what the actual? There's three more points left on the board. Not to mention the three points left on the board in the first quarter by going for it instead of kicking the field goal on fourth and three, which would have forced the Jaguars to need to get two touchdowns to not be behind instead of a touchdown and a field goal to not be behind. And you can't even make the argument that going for it there makes sense considering where you are on the field because you have to drive the length of the field or something as if it was the goal line or inside the five. The ball is at the 25-yard line. So if you kick the field goal, make it a two-score game, and then get a touchback, the Jaguars start at the 30, so roughly the same spot. The logic doesn't even make sense. But somehow, and I kid you not, it finds a way to get even worse. I was not kidding when I said that this game was just a plethora of dumb decisions. And it's the reason why this video is structured a little bit differently from other episodes of the series. Because there's a solid 10 that I could choose from. Because I don't understand Sirianni's logic at all. Because he chooses to go for it instead of kicking the field goal when it makes no sense. And then, for some inexplicable reason, with 2.16 left, he decides to do this. Elliot misses from 57 yards away. Elliot, will it go through? No! I'm all the times to kick the field goal. That's the time? That's the freaking time? From 57 yards out in that spot? Let's break down why this made no sense, especially considering Sirianni's logic throughout the entire game. This is the one time I would defend you going for it here, or at the very least, first try to draw the Jaguars offside. The Jaguars have no timeouts left. If you go for it and get the first down, you just won the game. The game is over. The Jaguars cannot stop the clock. You take three knees and you get the heck out of there. If you go for it and you don't get it, well, that stinks, but the Jaguars need to drive 61 yards to get a touchdown. Meanwhile, if you kick the field goal and you get it, the Jaguars get it back still down by one score, as a Jaguars touchdown would mean that you're no longer leading. Yes, the Jags need to get the two-point conversion, but the Jaguars were perfect on the day on two-point plays, so the odds were in their favor there. You put the ball back in Jacksonville's hands when you don't necessarily have to, and there is a chance that you might not ever touch the ball again for the rest of the game. If you miss the field goal, the Jaguars get it back, but instead of needing to go 61 yards, they only need to go 53 yards. Best case scenario if you go for it is that you win the game, and the worst case scenario is that the Jaguars need 61 yards to erase your lead. Best case scenario if you kick the field goal is that the Jaguars get it back and a touchdown erases your lead. And the worst case scenario is that the Jaguars need 53 yards to erase your lead. The best case scenario in one option is better than the best case scenario in the other option, and the worst case scenario in one option is better than the worst case scenario in the other option. 
And it's not like we're debating fourth and nine versus a 41 yard field goal. This is fourth and four versus a 57 yard field goal. When Jake Elliott has missed quite literally every kick from 50 plus yards this year that he's tried. These weren't just comparable odds. I'd argue that the odds of getting the fourth down were actually better. And this was the time to try the field goal? This was when you thought it was a good idea to kick it? I'm not saying kicking it was a dumb decision, but compounded with everything else, it's just baffling. It's the icing on top. Honestly, it's baffling how Nick Sirianni did everything wrong this game. He went for the points when it made no sense to. He didn't take the points when he should have taken the points. And he coached this game as though he had completely lost his mind. And for the game, which may I remind you, the Eagles actually won because the Jaguars were even more poorly coached somehow. Nick Sirianni met with the press and talked about his aggression. That didn't just border on stupidity, but bordered on Patrick blowing in from stupid town levels of stupidity. Take a listen to what he had to say. Nick, uh, you were pretty aggressive today going for the two-point conversion. You went for a couple of fourth downs. I'm curious, how do you balance like wanting to be aggressive with maybe looking at the results like you weren't converting them? Yeah, you know, um, we've done pretty good at those in the past. Um, you know, uh, and so you think you always think about everything. You think about who you have. You think about your past experiences with it. You always you always look at the analytics of it. Um, you know, we've been pretty good on those. Um, today, they did a good job, um, and so I'll look at I'll look at everything. Um, but everything in the moment, I'm always doing what I think's best for the football team. And um, you know, today it didn't work, but you know that's that's the way it goes. That's the hat I have to wear, right? There, you know, when we get a fourth down and we convert a fourth down, you know, we're not. You know, it's nothing's really said when we don't. Um, you know, I understand that there's going to be questions, um, but again. I have to I have to be able to have the balls to do that really to at the end of the day and say um, am I doing everything I can do to help us win the game and then those moments I thought I was but I'll go back and relook at them I'm always going to be hypercritical of myself um, and when it doesn't work I'm definitely going to think even more more about it so am I crazy or does this feel like the same exact press conference every single week week in and week out with this clown every week. The Eagles do something stupid with an in-game management situation, trying to be aggressive for no reason. And every week, Sirianni steps up and takes the blame and says that he's going to look at it and try and do better. Eventually, you run out of attempts, you run out of times to try, and you just have to do it. If you show up late to class one time and you apologize to the teacher and say that you'll do better, that's one thing. If you do it every single day, the words ring hollow. Sirianni doesn't get it. He's never going to get it. He's lucky that he's coaching one of the most talented rosters on paper in the NFL and that he's able to win these games in spite of his mistakes. This game was remarkable because literally, if any one of his decisions is different, the Eagles win by multiple possessions and this game is not even remotely close. The Jaguars have no chance of getting back into it. The fact that this was somehow one of the best and most competitive games of the week is a testament to just how bad Nick Sirianni is as a head coach and as a leader. The crazy part about the game between these two teams behind me right here is the fact that on the flip side, Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson was also a moron. He had Austin Travel returning punts over Parker Washington, even though Washington was the primary punt returner, which didn't work out at all because the very first punt, Austin Travel fumbled the ball. I know the logic was that Parker Washington was a receiver now and a starter, so he couldn't be back there returning punts, but he was back out there returning punts at the end of the first half, so so much for that. He had Ernest Johnson playing a lot of reps. He went for a fourth and one in his own territory and threw a pass despite needing one inch. He made so many questionable decisions throughout the game, and yet, somehow, Nick Sirianni was even worse. That's how bad this game was. This might have been the worst coach game from a combined effort from both coaches that I've ever seen in my life, and I do not say that lightly. Peterson was awful. Sirianni was awful. Both coaches felt as though they were just in a completely different planet. So what do we learn from all of this? Honestly, 
I don't even know how to sum up this part because there were about 10 different things that happened. In general, I suppose, take the points if you can increase the number of possessions you're winning by. Aggressiveness for the sake of aggressiveness isn't aggressiveness, it's stupidity. Going for it all the time doesn't make you smart, it makes you look stupid. Especially if it's in spots where even if you get it, the difference is marginal at best. And if the best case scenario in one option is better than the best case scenario in the other option, and the worst case scenario in one option is better than the worst case scenario in the other option, and the odds of getting option A are better than the odds of getting option B, then take the first option. I don't know if Nick Sirianni is trying to reinvent the wheel, or if he just genuinely doesn't know what the wheel is. But whatever the case, he needs to get his act together quickly, because his Eagles never should have been in such a tight game in the first place. And the fact that they were shows how awful the coach he is from an in-game management standpoint. Because when all of these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Scratch that. Talk about a whole game's worth of dumb decisions. Be sure to like and subscribe if you have not done so already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And check out my other channels, JG8 for the history of college football, JG7 for the history of baseball, and JG9 News, where you talk about all things happening in the NFL. Join me every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, where we'll play live NFL trivia for cash prizes. And make sure to join me live as we're on stream just about every single day. And thanks to all our Patreon members and our YouTube members for helping out the channel. See how you become a member and show your support financially in the description down below.